a mad story. Anyway, there's another thing about China. Australia signed up to the Paris Agreement that says that we have to cut our emissions to save the world from dangerous global warming. But under this deal, China, which is actually the world's biggest emitter, doesn't have to cut its own emissions because the story is it's poorer than us, therefore we've got to give them a break. But this means, of course, that the Paris Agreement helps China relative to us. It hurts us and the rest of the world. And we're left with very high electricity prices because we keep having to get rid of giant coal-fired power stations like Hazelwood in Victoria, blown up the, a few days ago. And last week, the Morrison government released a discussion paper on how we can get back to getting reliable and hopefully cheaper electricity again. The answer was more gas, apparently. Joining me is Matt Canavan, National Senator and former Resources Minister. Matt, great to catch up with you again. Is building more gas generators going to give this country the cheap electricity that we desperately need, particularly now to rebuild our economy? No, it won't, Andrew. Uh, it won't because we don't have uh, uh, cheap forms of, uh, of gas uh, in eastern Australia. And I'm particularly talking about eastern Australia. The, the western Australia doesn't have quite the same issues on energy that we do over here in the east. Now, I say this as a big supporter of developing our gas resources. I think we should do that. And there are some uh, uses for gas that you can't substitute away from uh, to produce plastics, uh, uh, to produce uh, 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 certain types of oil products. You've got to have uh, gas as the feedstock. No other source can replace that. So we should be developing our gas for those reasons. And gas will be an important part of some types of electricity production as well. But the simple geology here, uh, God-given geology, uh, which means we do not have the productive shale seams that exist in the United States. The gas that's being exploited here in eastern Australia is coal seam gas. By definition, there's no oil in a coal seam. Uh, over in the US, they're really going after the oil, not the gas. They go and put the rigs out to get the oil, the gas is a byproduct, and it's very cheap because it's a byproduct. But here in Australia, we don't have that flexibility. So our gas, the best estimates of our gas costs are about $6 a gigajoule, and that sounds like a lot of jargon. But basically, that's double the cost of the mining costs of coal, a little bit more than double for most of our coal mines, black coal, and over 10 times the cost of mining brown coal. And my view is to be competitive as a manufacturing industry again here in Australia, to bring back manufacturing jobs in Australia. We cannot afford to tie one arm behind our back. We already have high wages, but relatively uh, strict regulations. Uh, we must invest in the cheapest form of energy uh, to otherwise compete uh, in manufacturing again. Well, I had Angus Sater, the energy minister, on the show last week and he was saying, well, look, this is uh, techni you know, this way forward. They're uh, open to all technologies. They're not agnostic and they're not ruling out coal. But I have to say, I didn't really see much yes in this discussion paper to coal unless it was hedged with all these things like it had to be, you know, uh, low emissions technology was vastly more expensive than the sort of coal-fired power stations we've got now. Yeah, I was disappointed, Andrew. It was a, an important document, lots of work put into it. They surveyed about 100 technologies that uh, lower emissions. Um, and coal wasn't mentioned, even though there are proven technologies like high, efficient, high efficiency, low emission technologies, advanced ultra supercritical coal fired power stations starting to be rolled out in Japan, uh, uh, integrated gasification coal fired power stations. None of this mentioned. It did, they did find room to mention e bikes and scooters as apparently ways to uh, lower emissions and save the planet. I, I just, I'm, I'm dumbstruck by it and I've, I've passed it on to Angus. He assures me they'll, it's a draft and the final will we'll, we'll look into these things. Uh, but we've got to get real in this country. The, the bigger point here is what, what are we mucking around with all this rubbish like e-scooters and stuff when millions of Australians are out of work? We've got our major economic partner threatening our economic security in China. Uh, it's time to get real. <laughs> it's time to leave, leave, leave the childish things behind and focus on what is really important to make our country strong again, to bring back those manufacturing jobs we've lost. The last decade, our manufacturing industry has gone backwards. Uh, and to do that, you know, we've got to have the mature discussions about what, is, what are our natural advantages are uh, and not try and compromise these, those discussions with these, I think, now pointless uh, uh, diversions on things like lowering our very, very small carbon footprint, footprint here. That's going to do nothing for the environment. As you described, China's doing nothing. Uh, um, all it's doing is handi handicapping our own industry and our own ability to produce jobs in this country.
Yeah, yeah, well, look, manufacturing can't really compete effectively uh, with international competitors unless we have very cheap power, as cheap as we can make it. We've got enough disadvantages with distance and all that without crippling ourselves by making our power prices among the highest in the world. But, Matt, you actually supported the Paris Agreement when you, you were uh, a minister. Yep. I mean, isn't it time that more ministers said, listen, it's a joke, it's actually a disadvantage to us, and by the way, global man-made warming is not the big menace it's made out to be. Would you agree with that? Well, Andrew, you know, you're right to say I, I did support uh, the, the signing up to the Paris Agreement. I don't resolve from that. Uh, that's what my position was. I did that because I think Australia has benefited enormously from being involved in international agreements uh, over the past 30 years, including trade agreements. But... The world has changed. Uh, uh, we're increasingly seeing those agreements not being worth the paper they're written on, uh, uh, including in the trade space. Uh, uh, we are seeing countries revert back to a, a greater form of, of, of nationalism, economic nationalism, uh, and we have to respond to that because we're a, a relatively small country which can't just dictate how the world is going to work. And so I think we've got to get back to uh, driving growth from Australian sources of our natural advantages. We probably won't, won't be able to rely as much uh, on the globe to drive that economic growth like we have through the no. mining boom and the, and the broader growth in world trade. So, so they're just realities we've got to react to. So, so I've changed All my right. position. I don't think we should stay in the Paris Agreement now. There doesn't seem to be a lot in it for us uh, while, while China is not even honouring a trade agreement. Why, why would we tie ourselves down with this now? And uh, As I say, I, I think there's bigger I issues to focus you. on right now in our own country. Okay, well, another oh, look, day, also, another day... Another day, I hope to get you on uh, admitting that uh, global warming is far from the. Uh, I was about to talk about speaking. that. <laughs> oh, sorry, I, I was, was running out of time. I that. thought you so, were filibustering. Uh, anyway, okay, if you've quick. got to let me go. We'll do another. We'll do another. We'll do another night. Well, you just tell me in one uh, in ten seconds well, what, I, your, I, I, what your position is. I've, I've always, I've always thought that the large parts of the science here, and I've said this in the past, are exaggerated. I do, I do accept there's a link between carbon dioxide and. And, and a warming effect, the size of that effect is, uh, is, 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 is very uncertain. And that's in the IPCC reports. Their, their range is Good one on and a half to three and a half degrees Celsius. So, so I think so we've got to be with that really about this, first. It's not an imminent threat. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's Good pretty on detailed. You, mate. Thank one. you so much indeed for your okay. time, mate.